Let's see, there's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Phaeton, Jupiter. Wait, hold on, what Phaeton am I talking about? Well, let's see. It was the beginning of the 19th century, and the asteroid belt hadn't been discovered yet. In the year 1801, one man named Giuseppe Piazzi spotted the largest asteroid in the solar system, Ceres. At that time, people believed that there was a planet orbiting between Mars and Jupiter, and Ceres seemed to fit the bill. But the next year, another astronomer, Heinrich Olbers, found one more space body following a similar orbit. It was an asteroid which was later called Pallas. This discovery helped Olbers to figure out that these two space objects could be fragments of a planet. The discovery of two more asteroids, Vesta and Juno, seemed to confirm this theory. It was believed that the planet, which was named Phaeton in the 20th century, appeared in the early days of the solar system and was later destroyed, and its debris formed the asteroid belt. Olber's idea was called the disruption theory. To astronomers at that time, it seemed obvious that the planet once collided with a large space object, which led to its demise. The most likely candidate was Nemesis, a hypothetical red or brown dwarf orbiting our Sun. Another theory claimed that Phaeton could have gone through an internal cataclysm, which could have broken the planet into pieces. There was one more idea. Phaeton could have come too close to Jupiter and got torn apart by the gas giant's immense gravity. These days, though, astronomers don't believe in the disruption theory anymore. A new idea has replaced it. It's known as the accretion theory. It claims that the asteroid belt is all that is left of the protoplanetary disk. Supposedly, this disk had been originally orbiting the Sun, even before the planets formed. Unfortunately, because of Jupiter's gravitational forces, it never managed to coalesce into a planet. But what is this asteroid belt we keep talking about? This region is located between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. Tons of asteroids and even minor planets are found there. Some of them can sometimes migrate or even get thrown out of the asteroid belt to the outer solar system. The four largest asteroids in that area are Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, and Hygieia. They make up half the mass of the entire belt. As for the rest of the mass, countless smaller bodies make up for it. In loads of sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and has to try hard to get away from countless rocks threatening to smash their spacecraft. Well, it has nothing to do with the real thing. Even though there are thousands of asteroids in this region, they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Hey, but it's a movie, right? Anyway, when the asteroid belt was forming, some objects started to come together and form what we know as protoplanets. But the gravitational pull that was caused by the formation of Jupiter made such collisions too rough, and instead of forming large space bodies like planets, asteroids shuddered. Astronomers think that as a result of such collisions, more than 99.99% of the original mass of the asteroid belt was lost in the first 100 million years of the history of the solar system. Only the largest asteroids have enough gravity to get a spherical shape. Small ones are just often piles of rubble, loosely held together by gravity. And the tiniest objects in the asteroid belt resemble dust, so small they are. And all these objects, giant and tiny, orbit the Sun. There are several types of asteroids, depending on their composition and albedo, which is the proportion of light or radiation reflected by a surface. The main types are carbon asteroids, which have a very dark surface, silicon ones, you can also call them stone asteroids, and metal ones. The first two types account for around 75% and 17% of asteroids that we know about. For the first time, the asteroid belt was crossed by a spacecraft in 1972. It was the Pioneer 10 space probe. The spaceship managed to refute the theory that the belt was filled with dust that could easily damage all gadgets on board. It didn't happen. And since that time, eight more probes have traveled through the asteroid belt. 
And now, I'm going to tell you some cool facts about the solar system itself. Try to count how many of these facts you've known before and write your answer down in the comments below. The solar system is a staggering 4.5 billion years old. Scientists came to this conclusion after studying meteorites, the oldest material they managed to find. But our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion star systems. And if it's just our galaxy alone, what can we say about the whole universe? Now, our Sun is also insanely massive. Here's the proof. 99.86% of all the mass of the solar system is the mass of the Sun, in particular hydrogen and helium that it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Oh, by the way, contrary to popular misconception, outer space isn't a perfect vacuum. It contains not only stars and planets, but also clouds of interstellar dust, space plasma, and cosmic rays. Those are atom fragments dashing from the outskirts of the solar system. Now, one phenomenon astronauts should worry about while exploring space is cold welding. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get permanently stuck together. Kind of like galaxy glue. It doesn't happen on Earth since water and air keep pieces separate. You can see solar eclipses even though the Moon is 400 times smaller than the Sun, it's also 400 times closer to Earth, so it's perfectly capable of obscuring the star. But in 600 million years, the Moon won't be able to block the Sun completely because of the satellite's changing orbit. Behind the orbit of Neptune, there is the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massy icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that the scientists fail to explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed or not. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any body of water on other planets of the solar system. But it's not the ocean you think about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen. And its depth is around 25,000 miles, which is actually almost the same as the circumference of Earth. Now, people got to know about beautiful Saturn's rings in the 1600s. But now we know that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the giant gas planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own, but they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky material and have no rings. At the same time, Saturn's moon Rhea might have a ring system consisting of three narrow bands. If astronomers manage to confirm it, it'll be the first time for people to discover rings around a moon. Oh, and Mars might get a set of rings of its own in the next 70 million years. The red planet's largest moon, called Phobos, is orbiting closer and closer to the planet. One day, it's likely to get broken apart by the gravitational pull of the red planet and turn into a ring that can last for millions of years. And another cool fact about Mars. You've probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of such natural processes as volcanic activity and cow emissions. Anyways, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be life on Mars? Can there be cows on Mars? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.